We all know travel differs vastly in terms of time, emissions, cost and comfort, depending on how you choose to do it. But just how different are these factors on a real life trip? We were heading down to Paris in early August on the Eurostar with Cass family whilst our friends Hattie and Seb were making the same trip by car and ferry. On the journey I decided to compare how these two methods of transport stacked up against flying the same route. I'll be looking at the time, CO2 emissions and cost as well as other factors like baggage and comfort of taking a car, train or plane in a race to Paris. It's 5.45am, we've just left the house to head down to Ebbsfleet. Uh, our friends Hay and Seb left at 4am though, so they've got a head start on us because they're heading to uh, get an early morning ferry from Dover. It's now quarter past seven. We've been driving for about an hour and a half and we just passed Stansted Airport. So if we were flying to Paris, we would probably take like 10 minutes to park up and get to the terminal and then we'd have the usual two hours of checking in baggage, doing security and boarding the flight. It's 15 minutes later, it's now 7.30 and Hattie and Seb have got to Dover Ferry Terminal. Uh, they had to arrive there an hour early and they're now doing the check-in, boarding and their ferry leaves at 8.30. just arrived at Ebsley International at 8 o'clock. We've got an hour and 40 minutes before we need to, the train leaves. Our train doesn't leave till 9.41. Um, they recommend you get here about an hour before, but we've got here a bit earlier just to give us time in case traffic was bad and we all need a wee, so we're all gonna go and do that, first of all. Given that we did have that extra buffer time for arriving at Ebbsfleet, for the purpose of this comparison I also added a half an hour buffer to the arrival at Stansted Airport. Obviously depending on how close to the line you like to live your life, you may like more of a buffer or none at all. Either way, the comparison between the two is the same. We've just been through passport control and security which was so much easier than in an airport. There was no hassle with liquids or having to get out of electronics. So that's a bonus of going on the Eurostar. Hattie should now be on the ferry which will take about an hour and a half to cross the channel. It is worth adding here that Hattie and Seb's only limit on baggage was the size of their car. So driving is obviously best if you're transporting a lot. It's 9.35 and we're now going to pull the train and find our seats. Okay, so, can you get off my hand? Okay, so we're now on board and we found our seats which are a lot more spacious and comfortable than on an aeroplane. From here it's just two hours straight into the centre of Paris. It's now 9.55 and if we were flying the plane would now be taking off for roughly a 1 hour 20 flight time to Paris Airport. Hattie's also just texted me and said that she's arrived in Calais and now they're disembarking and they've got about a 3 hour drive if the traffic is okay. Where are we? France. <laughs> we've just come out of the Euro tunnel so we're now in France and we'll probably be taking over Hattie and Seb round about now. Fortunately, I don't suffer from motion sickness, but Kaf and some of her family do quite severely at times. I'm afraid there isn't much escaping it though. Whether turbulence on a plane, rolling seasickness on a ferry, or the high speed movement of Eurostar, the best option will really depend on what kind of motion least affects you personally. Or alternatively, just sleep through it all like Kaf's mum did. Just so you know, this is uh, Harriet with her makeup finished. <laughs> 
Okay, it's 12.15 French time, they're an hour ahead. Um, and if we were flying, we'd now be landing in Paris airport. But obviously we would still have to go through immigration, passport control, and pick up any checked luggage. Um, obviously it's hard to say how long that will take, because it depends on how busy the airport is on that day. Uh, but let's be optimistic, and for the sake of this video, say it takes half an hour. just got off the train in central Paris, so our journey for the day is finished. It's now 12.45, so if we were flying into Paris, then we'd just about be getting out of the airport now, but we'd still have about 45 minutes or so of journey time to get here into central Paris from the airport. I'm just ringing Hattie to see where she is. Hello, you right? I'm just wondering where you are. Um, we are up, up, an hour away from where we're going. We're already in Paris, so we beat you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. She's still got an hour until she gets to her accommodation, so we've definitely beat her in the car. So looking at the overall timings, as you would expect, driving did take significantly longer, particularly when you take into account that Hattie and Seb got a head start on us. Once you factor in all the additional transport and airport procedures either side of a flight, then taking the train can be just as quick or even quicker than flying as it has been in this case. It's also worth noting that 90-95% to of Eurostar trains run on time, as opposed to just 63-69% to of flights on the same route. More importantly, and the biggest contrast, is seen in emissions. For the purpose of the comparison, the car emissions for all three were based on a petrol car doing 50 miles per gallon, and the ferry, train and plane emissions are rounded averages from different carbon calculators. I was somewhat surprised the car journey was so high, but do remember that if there is multiple passengers this will be split between them. Even so, it is still overtaken by the plane's massive 80kg of CO2 emissions per passenger. The clear winner is Eurostar again, which emits nearly 90% less CO2 than flying. Finally, I will briefly show you the cost of each journey, however this is only really meant to demonstrate all the things to consider when making a price comparison. The actual price to you will vary vastly depending on how cheaply you can get your tickets, how fuel efficient your car is, or what extras you buy like baggage on a plane. These prices are either what we paid or roughly what we would have if we had bought a reasonably priced ticket in advance. As I mentioned, one thing to bear in mind with all these comparisons is that these emissions and prices are based off one person making the journey. If there is more of you, then things like petrol, parking and tolls can be split, which is why we were driving to Ebbsfleet instead of getting the train the entire way as we would've had there been less of us. If you look at the effect 4 passengers has on overall emissions, the train is still the most efficient, but the plane journey is now dwarfing the others with a huge 340 kilograms of CO2 emissions, which goes to show just how quickly it can stack up. Now, other than a bit of pure curiosity, the purpose of this video was to demonstrate how alternatives to flying can not only be better for the environment, but simply better overall, whether for cost, timing, comfort or baggage. Obviously, the shorter route we travelled is naturally more favourable to train and is served by a good high-speed service, but even if we were travelling further, the Eurostar has direct trains to Belgium and the Netherlands now. Or you could hop on another high-speed train in Paris and travel to the rest of France, Germany, Switzerland and beyond. Yes, it might start to take longer than flying as you increase those distances, but it will be less hassle, less restriction on baggage, a more comfortable and spacious journey where you get to see countryside you would otherwise fly straight over. But most importantly, it is far better for the planet. A couple of day le days later after driving to Paris and if you're traveling by road remember to play 
toll charges because Hattie and Seb have only just remembered that they didn't play the Dartford Crossing charge. Oh. <laughs>